Greetings, greetings, all my dreamers and dreamettes. It's your boy Mickey Fenty, aka Mickey Made It. If you're new to this channel, you know what to do to this channel. Subscribe right now. Also, if you want to support the brand, it's inspired by dreams. Shop. Okay, today's episode, dreamers and dreamettes, y'all gotta pay attention to what's going on. We're talking about Gen Z, we're talking about the work crisis right now. People going to work and not just giving up the bare minimum as far as they're working and you know just not feeling compensated so in turn they end up just working the bare minimum so you guys let me know what you feel about this and let's just hear from gen z see what their take is on it and um do they have some truth or should they be just working their hardest at every job you guys let me know down below and let me know what you think because i really want to know about this one and we'll talk about it on my next live which will be wednesday morning 9 a.m all right love you guys i tell people all the time you got hired and get paid to do one job that's it if you get paid to wash the floors what you scrubbing the walls or cleaning windows for every job i get it's an even exchange i'm doing what i agreed to do for what you agreed to pay me that's it you want me to do anything extra you better already have extra money in your hand when you ask me now if you one of those people that don't care and you don't mind doing extra stuff do you but to the companies out there just because steve want to go above and beyond don't mean i will steve can be employee of the month six years in a row i don't give a damn that's not what i'm here for don't you want to improve your skills and advance in the company and help business grow hell to the north <laughs> i want my paycheck and for you to leave me the hell alone how is that hard to understand at the last place i worked at the owner came out and was like you know everything is everybody's job and no the fuck it ain't you about to give me everybody's paycheck no nah, big dog i pulled up the job description on nd it don't say none of that shit you just said moral of the story you not obligated to come in on your day off do anything that's not in your job description you better use all them pto hours and take a day off if you need to i don't care if they overstaffed that's not your problem not being in an abusive relationship that job don't give a fuck about you you shouldn't care that much about it they be out here brainwashing people man people be more loyal to their job than their mama don't make no sense somebody said our generation like to do the bare minimum or just enough when it comes to jobs and i'm trying to figure out is that supposed to be an insult especially considering the fact that most jobs either pay bare minimum or just enough but i'm supposed to be the one to go above and beyond this might be a hot take, but I'm going to do bare minimum days at work and I'm not going to feel guilty about it. If I'm extremely anxious and overstimulated or having a depressing, messy day, I'm only going to do the bare minimum, which is what is required today and what is required tomorrow. All that extra stuff that jumbles in my brain that just like further pushes me down that hole that my mind is trying to trick me into going down. I'm not going to do. I'm going to do that tomorrow because eight times out of 10, if I let myself just rest and recuperate the next day, I feel so much better. And I've always been someone who's like an all or nothing person. So if I'm not feeling good today, I know tomorrow if I'm feeling good, I can do like 12 days of work in one day. Now, am I having a bare minimum day every day? Absolutely not. But if I was, if I was having back to back bare minimum days, I know something's really going on. Like something really serious is going on. And I've always just let my management know like, hey, this life thing is happening. And what's great is every boss that I've had is like, okay, totally understand life happens. Focus on these things. These are your priorities, everything else we can deal with. And that's just been super super helpful. I've never had any issues in my evaluations and I've been doing bare minimum days since I started working. I just don't feel guilty about it anymore. No. If they ask you to do something outside your job description, does that happen a lot? Absolutely. Every day I go to work and I'm expected to be cross-trained without any bump in pay. I'm expected to cover for people who, quite frankly, they decide when and if they want to come to work. And it's just part of my job to do their work just because I'm there. And if... <laughs> a team effort and so no i'm not going to overextend myself and bend over backwards for companies who don't take all the little nuances of being an employee of theirs into consideration what do you do so i'm a patient care coordinator i just make sure that the waiting room is taken care of and that people are seated and get to see their doctor on a timely manner so what's the last thing your boss asked you to do that you said no not, not, not gonna do that verifying insurance I'm not going to do that. Mm -hmm. 
Why not? Because I don't want to. It's genius. Let's talk like bare minimum for a good employee. Bear with me while I get dressed. So I had an interview the other day and the interviewer told me, partner at a law firm, he said um, that they were really looking for people. He shared with me that they have problems sometimes with associates who they give an assignment to, the assignment doesn't give them an update, they don't give them the deadline, they miss deadlines, blah, blah, blah. So later in the interview, you know, it's question time, which by the way, I freaking hate that portion. So I have some pre-written questions, but I have to remember mine for my interview today. Thank you, TikTok. Anyway, so he, I have some pre-written questions. So one of my questions is like, what separates a good associate from a great associate, right? So I ask him this question and he looks at me like, like I hadn't been paying attention because then he reiterates this like missing deadlines, not keeping the partner updated. Y'all, that to me is not a good associate. That to me is like subpar, like we shouldn't have hired this person. They are not, they do not have the skills or the maturity for accountability and teamwork to be even working in this position. That is not a good associate. I'm like, you're telling me that my bare minimum is the great? Cause that's what I'm hearing. Because the bare minimum is like keeping the person that assigned you the project updated, being on time. What? So I'm floored. Also, I didn't get a call back for that interview. So maybe he thought like, wow, this girl doesn't pay attention. But I'm still, I'm shook. What? Who, who is doing that? Who is working in a way that you get an assignment and you're like, oh, the deadline doesn't matter. Yes, it does. Because also currently in my job, like it's jurisdictional. Like we, the, or there is a hearing. Like you have, like people are going to show up. You better, what? What? The judge is right. What, what's going on? What's going on? And also, did he think that I did that? Because honestly, I'm like that. Wait, I thought you were talking about a sub, sub par person, not not baseline good. That's not good. What world do we live in? What's going on? <laughs> Someone was like, I'll stop doing bare minimum when my job starts paying overachiever money. <laughs> and that is funny because it is true, right? Like, I guess <laughs> let's speak of, let's speak about bare minimum in work environment, right? So if you're in a job that you don't really care for, it's not really paying you that great money the chances of you being in, like motivated and incentivized to want to put in work at that company are going to be low. Yes. However, two things. One, do you think they'll ever offer you a position of growth or leadership or a promotion in the company if you're always doing bare minimum? <laughs> like, do you think that you'll ever see an increase in your pay or any real money if you're always that employee that does bare minimum. Like, sit on that for a second. Number two, if you're still doing the most and you're being that overachiever at a place that's not appreciating you and that's not paying you what you're worth, that's a different story. All right, <laughs> find yourself a new job. <laughs> okay, but um, now I want to flip the switch um, and talk about bare minimum and relationships. Um, <laughs> And overall, and, and I mean that relationships, be plural, it could be a relationship with a, you know, a, a partner or friend, um, any of your external relationships, right? Oh, bare minimum. So yeah. when you are willing to accept bare minimum treatment, um, it sets a precedent, right? The standards that you set for yourself um, will teach people or I should say will tell people or show people whatever how to treat you so if you're accepting bare minimum and you're letting people just stomp all over you and you're compromising and you're doubling back on your standards and your um <laughs> beliefs and all that then they're gonna keep doing that you know so you want to set a standard that these people are gonna uphold anyone that comes into your life needs to <laughs> meet the standard or if not <laughs> deuces honestly bare minimum really comes down to your self-respect 
how much are you willing to put up? How much do you love yourself to set these standards and to not play about yourself? So bare minimum really has. I mean, I worked hard at jobs I didn't like. Was it because I had to? Yeah, because I had to. I had to pay. To do with your character, character development, your personal development, you're going to want to brush up on that. Do you ever feel burned out at work? I used to experience that as well. Until I started to just give the bare minimum at work. Less effort, less expectation, happy me, happy life. They don't pay me enough. That you literally gave your all to. And the crazy part is, I only been working at the fucking job a um, year in. Shit, next month would have been two years. So I only was working at the job for a year and 11 months. Yeah. But with that being said, when I tell you all, I have literally, like, literally, I have jumped through hoops, did whatever that this job ever asked me to do. I, bitch, up until, up until I was fired, I was coming in work at 4 30 in the fucking morning, picking up their employees who didn't have cars. Crazy, right? Just for the mother, let me go. And not even try to, I feel like them bitches didn't even pinch upper management to ask them, can they keep me? Everything I done did for the damn company and them mother still let my dumb ass. I'm telling you, don't you sit your ass up there and give your all to no job. You're going to be looking stupid. Invest that time into something that you really could be profiting for real, for real off of. So I recently had someone tell me that because they didn't get promoted, they were going to just get by, effectively quiet quitting. I responded by saying, so your work product is conditional. You only put forth an effort based on how much you feel you're valued and appreciated. As someone who's been underleveled, undervalued, undercompensated, and underestimated, I certainly get it. It is most certainly demoralizing to not have your contributions appreciated or acknowledged. But consider this. What if you push anyway because that is who you are and what you believe in? It's more than just a brand. And you don't have anything to prove to anyone else but yourself. Because you are that good. Striving for excellence can lead to personal growth and skill development. Even if external recognition is limited, you can continue to enhance your abilities and knowledge, which can benefit your career in the long run. Also, a commitment to high standards can be intrinsically motivating. When you take pride in your work and seek to improve it, you derive satisfaction from the process itself, regardless of external rewards. You can enhance your professional reputation and credibility. Your dedication to excellence may open up future opportunities, even if they are not immediately apparent. It could lead to promotions, new projects, or roles in which your skills are more value. Well, what I could say, Gen Z, they don't play that. They speak from the heart and they tell it like it is. And even on YouTube as content creators, there is some kind of sort of bare minimum type of thing going on, especially when you know you can do a whole lot more, like you could probably do animations. You could probably go out there and work a whole lot harder, but being that they champion certain types of things in certain cultures and certain things get put in certain places and get recommended more a lot of people do their bare minimum and end up just doing the things that would gather them the attention they need to make a profit so it happens in all fields in all places um you guys let me know what you think leave your comments down below and until next time it's your boy mickey fenty aka mickey made it if you're new to this channel you know what to do to this channel subscribe